Hello Xamarin developers, this is Xamarin guys so 53 tutorial. In this tutorial, we will be creating a beginner's calculator just like this. And let us perform some simple calculation. I will clear that in my Android. And then 89 into then 2, I will get as 178. And it will be same for our Windows uh, application also. You can see over there. And if I get that percentage, then it will be divided by 100. So let us clear that. Again, let us get that percentage value for windows and then we will get as exact value for that uh, windows application and then if i multiply with its value then i'll get 625 that's all so in order to create such type of project let us go to file new and then project okay and select a cross-platform app as we are going to create a multi-platform application and uh, we'll be targeting as dotnet standard project after this and then uh, selecting uh, Android iOS as well as Windows application and I'll cancel it for now. Let us go towards our cross-platform project that is our Xamarin calculator project. You can see over here. Before going to our main page, let us see what's the recipe that is being cooked in app.xaml page that is app.xaml.cs that is our code behind. Here we are going to navigate our main page when our application gets started. So let us go to our main page. You don't need to worry about the code, I'll be giving it in the description below. In this tutorial, we'll be defining what is happening inside our whole shared codes. Basically, this is our design page where we are going to add some thickness property for our Android as well as iOS. Here, I'll be providing thickness property for iOS only as it requires extra space. As we know that our calculator UI contains many buttons, it's a tedious task to specify each property for our buttons. So I'll be creating some styles inside our resource dictionary and I'll be giving a key name as info style and targeting buttons as we are going to implement buttons for our given UI. In short, we'll define some property for our buttons where our button height, height, border radius, text color, property size will be defined within some styles and I'll be calling that style name for our given button. In our tutorial number 48, we have already discussed about the use of grids and how they can be used in order to frame our UI. Here I have implemented 6 grid rows and 4 columns. You can see over here. Check over here, we have 5 grid rows as well as 4 grid columns and then in grid 0 we have mentioned about 2 star that means it is going to cover 2 by 3 of its entire screen here you can check over here this 2 star means that is covering 2 by 3rd of its entire screen and we are going to assign it for result text this is our result text that is going to take 2 by 3rd of its entire screen and this is our grid column 1, 2, 3 and 4 and we'll be assigning white as grid column and that's all for grid rows as well as grid columns. When that label occupies 2 by 3rd of the entire screen, then I will be placing that label name as uh, result text as this will be used when we are going to update our UI from code behind. A specific label, I am placing that grid dot column span as 4 for a given label as it should cover the entire screen. Here you can see over here and along with that I have placed font size as 48, font attributes as bold and then color as a black and text as 0 as its initial value should be 0. Now we are going to create 19 buttons. You can see over here. These are my 19 buttons that I am going to create for my calculator UI. This is basic implementation that I have done. You can do more than that. And inside each cell, I am placing each grid rows as well as column a specified button you can see over here this is my specified button AC and I'll be placing inside grid row 1 and grid column 0 and I'll be implementing some style for that specified button and then only one other thing I'm going to change is that a clicked event and then on select that button what is going to be implemented that is the click event that is going to be changed over here and for different buttons, different click events are going to be selected as you can see over here. When button number 7 to 0, we are specifying a clicked event that will be same for all the buttons. And then for our button text as x2, that is multiplication of that same number, we will be specifying a different click event and we will be implementing different click event for our different click handler inside our code behind can see over here these are my operators and then this operator when they get selected then these events will be generated inside our code behind file that is our 
mainpage.xaml.cs file is the only thing that is going to be changed now after creating our UI let's go to our code behind file of mainpage.xaml.cs this is my code behind file and I'll try to describe it a little bit more so that you can understand it this code behind file we are going to handle all those events that were clicked in our UI when a number from 0 to 9 is clicked then this method is going to be handled as on select that number let us go to our designer part of mainpage.xaml here when our number from 0 to 9 is pressed and that is clicked then on select number event is going to be called and this whole event is going to be handled inside our code behind file that is on select number that's all for that event and then on select operator when that operator button is clicked then this event is going to be called and then that event is going to be handled inside our code behind file these are my simple set of code that is implemented after our button is clicked if you want to find the percentage of given number then it will take a specific number and then calculate its percentage and then on the square root it will do same as well as for squaring that whole number then it will do that same for that given number there are various methods that we can implement in order to create calculator and this one is the easiest one and let us use some breakpoints so that we can understand it better in order to understand our whole code flow let us take an example as task 1 5 plus 6 is equals to 11 our button 5 plus 6 are clicked then which event is going to calculate our whole task and then which operator we are going to be used will be specified with the help of our breakpoint let us use plus for that as we are going to break that condition up to here and now let us go to our code behind now let us run our project by setting our android project as our startup project I'll set as startup project now if we run that project if we press that 5 button here we are tracking button click event as sender is the button you are creating object of the same button class and typecasting the button object and assigning to local object then accessing its properties so our text property of our whole button you can see over here as text we are going to call as 5 let us press F10 in order to go to the next set of code and before going there let us specify our current state as 1 because we have to specify a stable state for our whole calculator and then this line of code that is this dot result text dot text is equals to 0 or current state is less than 0 that is specify that if both the conditions are true then both of them will be executed at once first our label text is assigned as 0 and when our button is going to be clicked as 9 or 5 anything then that 0 should be removed from here and, and it should be assigned as null value for our initial button clicked we are mentioning that current state is less than 1 that is when 1 is less than 0 then that condition will be excluded from there and then it will go out of the loop we are going to update our text label as pressed button before that we have to assign a specific value for our first number because we are going to use two numbers for our calculation purpose so in order to dynamically update our number we are going to use uh, try parse method here first number will be assigned as five number as we have already pressed you can see over here after this condition gets passed that is after our condition get passed and it will come out of the loop and then 5 will be updated automatically because of that try pass method it's time to call that plus operator button so I'll maximize it if that plus button is clicked then this event will be handled over here let us click that plus button then this method is called you can see over here when that operator is called at first my current state is 1 and then after that it becomes minus 2 as it gets updated over here and then after that our button text will be pressed as plus button and then if that uh, condition is passed then it will show nothing because it's already in the stack and then after that if I press that 9 button again it is going to select a given number you can see over here after that you can see here that current state has been updated to minus 2 from our plus operator
obviously know that our current state minus 2 is less than 0 that's why it will pass to current state is equals to current state times minus 1 here our current state will be updated to 2 now after using our try pass method and our current state is 2 that's why it will fail next condition and it will pass towards our else condition that is second number is equals to number and it will be updated as 9 you can see over here my stack contains 5 plus 9 and it's time to calculate our 5 plus 9 event I press that is equals to button then this event is going to be handled over here and then if my current state is 2 that is generated after pressing that two variables inside my stack then this method that is operator helper method is going to be called and then I'll be passing that three variables inside that method that is value 1, value 2 as well as my operator if our program is correct then our whole program flow will pass towards this condition that is case plus and then after hitting that break condition then value 1 will be 5 and value 2 will be 9 and then after coming out from that condition that would result will be updated as 14 we can see over here and then current state will be updated as minus 1 and then after passing that whole condition that whole UI is going to be updated as 14 that's all I'll tell you why I have updated that current state is equals to minus 1 when we have evaluated our expression as 5 plus 9 is equals to 14 now we have to understand that our current state is minus 1 at first and then we have only one variable that is 14 if we press that square root button then this event will be handled over here time of calculation user will face two scenarios as current state is equals to minus 1 that is got from evaluating our previous expression as 5 plus 9 is equals to 14 there we can get minus 1 from our previous expression and for that current state is equals to 1 about current state is equals to 1 in our next task now if our current state is equals to minus 1 that we got from our previous expression that is from here here our current state is equals to minus 1 which gets satisfied and then this whole condition get executed as square root of our first number that is our 14 number you can see over here and then it will get out of the loop and then our whole current state will be updated as minus 1 you can see over here our square root of 14 is 3.74 that's all user will face another scenario is that when our current state is 1 you can see over here when our current state is 1 then if I press one button then it gets updated you can see over here and then first number is assigned as 1 again I press one button then our first number is updated as 1 after that if I press that square root then my whole current state is assigned as 1 and then this condition will be satisfied and after that our result will be updated as follows that is all we want to get that cool circle buttons for our android project then we have to go to main activity of our android then we have to change app compact activity to forms application activity and then remove two portion of code that is tab layout resource and toolbar resource that is from here that's all thank you guys thanks for watching keep in touch for next tutorials